Good morning. God bless you. It's your boy Speaks tapping in with you. Just getting back to the crib from dropping the kids. Um, I want to share with you the importance of prayer. The importance of prayer. I know we go over this a lot, but I feel like it's vital, so it's good to keep going over and over it. Um, first off, the way that you get to know me is by spending time with me. And when you spend time with me, you start picking up nuances and methods of delivery. And, and what happens is, what happens is this, you start to sound more like me. Maybe you start to do more things that I do. I start to do more things that you do. Um, so in prayer, when you spend time with the Lord, you are going to start talking like him, thinking like him, um, and being more like him, responding more like him. And that's important. So that's the importance of prayer. Another importance of prayer is you actually get to connect with the creator of the universe, having access to the creator of the universe, a beautiful thing. Another beautiful thing about prayer is you get your marching orders from heaven. You don't have to walk aimlessly throughout life. You can gain strength and courage in places where normally you wouldn't. And you can tap in at any point in time. Another benefit of prayer, when, when God starts to speak, you get this boldness and confidence in you that you can't find anywhere else. You can't find it anywhere else. And, and finally, um, you give God permission to invade earth. God doesn't need you. He doesn't need you because he's God. He can do everything by himself. He doesn't need you, but he chooses you. So this is how it goes. Without God, Man cannot, without God, get instructions to that man to carry out into the earth. Sometimes he needs man, like in Sodom and Gomorrah's case, to intercede, to intercede. And so he'll ask us to pray for a certain situation, a leader or whatever, um, he'll, he'll do that. And if we're not ready, if we're not willing, then we just, we just miss out. That's just flat out. We just miss out. But if we are, we get blessed in the process. All right. All right. So I'm giving you multiple points on, on prayer. And after this, I'm about to go get in prayer, to be honest. I ask for y'all prayers because I want to um, be obedient to the call of God on my life. I got a few things that I got to do before um, before it's all said and done and I go to work. Um, let's, let's, um, let's give you the major key. So those of you that have watched up to this point, the major key is this. God, I had a situation yesterday and God like spoke clearly to me. So clear. And I would want to share it with y'all. Um, it goes like this. Look, so yesterday I had a, at work, I had a patient. Um, no, I wasn't even a patient. I had, I had somebody come up and ask um, 
for an emergency bed. So he was knocking on one of the doors of our building. And when I approached him, he ran off. So I was like, okay, that's weird. So I went and I, and I, and I tried to catch up to him. And I saw where he was cutting through to get away from me. But I knew where that was leading to. So I met him on the other side. And I was like, hey, how can I help you? And he's like, man, I was wondering if you guys have a, an emergency bed for me uh, today. But I don't know, I kind of got scared. And I was like, okay, well, check it out. We, we, that department of our facility is closed right now, but check it out. Call in the morning, okay, call in the morning. He's like, okay, uh, you guys have a bed available? I said, call in the morning. So he said, okay. So this is what happened. This dude is sweating profusely and he looks like he's so thirsty. And he asked me if, uh, if I have a bottle of water. And I was like, you know what? I actually do. Let me go get that for you, okay? And so I went to get him the bottle of water. And when I came back, he was gone. He was out. He was nowhere to be found. So I'm like, man, what the heck? And then it's like, I heard God loud and clear. He was like, this is what it's like with my children. And they come to me. They ask me for things. And if prayer, nobody wants to listen. Nobody cares about waiting on the Lord. And so that's the major key. Wait on the Lord. Sit in prayer. Yes, we have things that that um, we need to we need to get off our chest. And everything that is on your mind or on your heart, God is concerned about. So don't ever think that your prayer is a lame prayer. Never think that your prayers are falling on deaf ears because everything that is in your heart, the Lord is concerned about. That's in scripture. I'll look it up later. I believe it's somewhere in Hebrews. Um, but whatever's on your heart, the Lord is concerned about. And the Bible asks us to never stop praying. It tells us, instructs us to never stop praying. Um, pray unceasingly. So we should always be praying. If we're praying 23 hours a day, seven days a week, it's not enough. Because we're never supposed to stop praying. I know that's not um, reality, but I can give you uh, uh, confidence and assurance that if you do this, if you pray consistently, unwaveringly, and you pray steady in the Lord, you will see just how personable, just how available, and just how intimate God is with you. It could be the smallest thing, but when he knows he has a vessel that will wait on him, that's a beautiful thing. Most people don't know this secret is that the spirit realm, meaning the supernatural, the spirit of God or the spirit of Satan, the spirit realm altogether needs a dirt suit to have earthly license and dominion here on the earth. Because dominion, as in Genesis 1.26, was handed over to man. And we have the authority in the earth. And the spirits need a dirt suit to have authority in the earth. That's why God, I believe, chooses to not do anything without man. Because we are created in his image. And he needs us to fulfill his word to carry out dominion, to be fruitful and multiply. So without man, God chooses not to do anything. Without God, man can't do anything. We can't even breathe. If God removes his breath from us, we die. So what am I saying? If he has a vessel that is available and, and available to be used, that will sit and listen. Pray your prayers. Get everything off of your heart. 
But once you do, sit and listen to what God has to say to you. Because again, this man that came to my job, he asked for a bottle of water and I went and got it for him. And I came back. And matter of fact, this was what's really crazy is I got him a bottle of water, two Capri Suns, and a Lunchable that was in a cooler that I had from the trip that I had just taken. And it was nice and cold. I brought it back to him and he was gone. I mean, he didn't have the patience to wait for it. And it only took me like two, three minutes to grab it and be back to the location that I said I would bring it to. But he didn't want to wait for it. And that right there, watch this in the spirit. Open up your spiritual ears and eyes. God has us in a space where He's just getting what we need and dropping it in us because everything that you need is already in you. And if it's not, God will place it in you. I believe that it's already in you though. But watch this parable. You ask God for something and he says, okay, my son, my daughter, I got you. Wait right here. And he goes... And he gets it off the shelf, right? Walks away, two feet, gets it off the shelf, comes to bring it back to you, and you already gone. So he's like, all right, I'll wait. You'll be back. Puts it back on the shelf. Now, what is that you're already gone? You have way too many uh, busy moments in your life. You on to the next. Your mind wanders. You're all over the place. You have your task, your to do list uh, in front of you that's kind of tormenting you. But aren't we supposed to die to ourselves every day? Are we supposed to wake up, die to ourselves? By praying, fasting, reading, worshiping, repeat, and repeat, and repeat. Well, when we worship our schedules and our to, on our to-do list, we ask for things. God wants to give it to us, but by the time he gets back to us, we already gone. So whose fault is that? Is that God's or is it ours? Remember the scripture? You couldn't wait up an hour with me and pray? Well, wake up. The time has come. Right? So my encouragement and the major key about prayer is this. Wait. Wait on the Lord. Finish your task and, or finish your prayer list and all the tasks that you want to accomplish for the day. Release those to the Lord and then sit Listen and wait on the Lord. You may hear something directly come from the Lord that was so left field, but you know it's God and it's the thing that you need. He may tell you, you know what? I know you got the deadline, but today I want you to set that down. And if you're obedient to it, there's gonna be a blessing for you. So I can't tell you how God wants to bless you, but I know he wants to bless you. And a blessing, it, it brings no sorrow with it. So let's pray. Father God, thank you for this prayer. Um, time to be able to come before you. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your holiness. I thank you for speaking this word of encouragement to me and showing me the reality of uh, my prayer life and others. And God, I stand before you holy as you are, and I ask that you will forgive me for not waiting on you. Forgive me for not sitting longer and listening. Forgive me for having my to-do list in front of you, Father God. Forgive me for making more time for the things of God than to actually sit with you, Father. I thank you for uh, helping me to have more of a praying spirit and to sit with you, Lord. You own the cattle on a thousand hill and everything in them. So why should I worry about anything that 
is on my schedule. You will make everything come together. And I just thank you, Lord, for, for this revelation. Um, for every person that's on the live feed right now, I ask that you touch them right where they're at, that you would make sense of this message. I know my brain may not connect the dots, but Holy Spirit, I know you can in Jesus' name. So I pray that you do. And I pray that you touch every person right now, God. I pray that you would stir their spirit, that you would hear their prayer, that uh, you would give them the good desires of their heart in Jesus' name. I pray that you would uh, give us a desire to pray dangerous prayers, uh, point out anything offensive in me and help me uh, be more righteous and holy in your sight, Father God. I pray for every listener and watcher right now, Father God, that they will have the peace of Christ over them, that they will have a spirit of forgiveness about them, that they will walk in love and spirit and truth, that they will not have a spirit of envy. And those that have a spirit of envy, remind them that they have a seat at the table, Father God. But they got to pick up the work that you have assigned for them, Lord Jesus. I pray for every lost soul right now, Father God, that you would surround them with Bible-believing, God-fearing, reverencing men and women of God. That they would sit there and be stirred to a point of what I'm doing is not working for me. What I'm doing, I do not feel confident in no more. The conviction of the Lord is so strong on me that I must submit to his holy plan for my life. I thank you, Father God, for your mercy. I thank you for um, the people that you have put in my life to encourage me, to build me up. I uh, thank you for uh, stewarding my finances and helping me steward my finances and showing me where to invest and where not to invest, where to invest my time and not to invest, God. I thank you for your holy, holy, holy plan. You said we do not copy the behaviors and customs of this world but we be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And then we'll know the good and perfect will that is pleasing for our lives. And we will only find that when we stop hustling, stop grinding, stop trying to force things, God. We will only find it in that spot, in that, spot, in that situation where you are holy, you are God, and those who know who you are, they will wait on you because you are faithful, full of mercy, full of grace, full of favor, full of strength, full of courage, full of freedom, Father God. Pray for the one that is addicted right now, God. I pray that you would give him the strength and self-control to be able to break the power of the addiction, that's, that stronghold that's over them in Jesus' name. I pray for a stirring of the word of God to be in their spirit, Father God. I pray for a spirit of fasting to come over them, Lord Jesus. I pray for everybody listening, God, that if I said anything that was of me, that it would be quickly forgotten. It would have no results, no fruit, no benefit. But if it came from the Holy Spirit or from the inspiration of you, Yahweh, that it would be remembered, that it would stir their heart to follow your way more closely. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I pray for uh, Joshua Romain, my brother, man, my brother. Hallelujah. This is my brother, Father God. Lift him up. Bless him. Uh, to be with, uh, without any doubts, bless open doors to open up for him that no man can shut, close all doors that he's not supposed to walk through. In Jesus' name, I, I pray that you would bless Squeaky Clean. I pray that you would give him a fresh creativity to write more anointed songs for you, Father God. I pray that you would give him a new song today that he could go record and it would be the best song that he's ever done in Jesus' name. I pray for all the Northwest generals out here, God, that that are out here pushing the line for your kingdom, that are pushing the plow, God, that are out here standing up for deliverance, that are standing up for the word of God, that are out here loving on your people and loving on you, God, and in the word and sitting in your presence, Father God. I pray for every ministry that comes to mind, Father God, triple R off the top, 
Sacred Music Tribe, I pray that you would just bless Sacred Music Tribe to have a greater hunger and thirst for your word and righteousness, a greater zeal and passion for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of your holy word, to be able to be teachers of the word that don't need reproof, that don't need to be corrected, but that can speak the truth and love, Father God, that will sit and study, Lord Jesus, that will be more uh, filled with the word than they are with music. And the music will be more anointed because of the word. And the word will create more of your presence in the music. Bless sacred music, child, Father God. Triple R, LOJ, soldiers, bless them, Father God. And uh, I know the mighty work that you're doing in the city. I know the finances that were sold in the city, Father God. For, for the benefit of lost souls, bless the fruit of their labor, the works of their hands. Whatever they touch, may it be blessed. Whatever they uh, wrap, may it be blessed. May it be anointed. May it reach the hood and those that they're targeting, Father God, that it would change souls, that it would change lives. Let us not underestimate the power of a rap song in Jesus' name. It does not matter. If you convict the soul, then that's what creates the heart transformation. That's what brings salvation, Father God. Bless your holy name, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for every minister out here that's using their gifts and talents. I thank you for Rissa Garcia and her uh, photography ministry that she would just capture more movements of the Lord and great expressions that come genuinely from the heart to you, Father God. May we be uh, in one accord for the Lord in Jesus' name. I pray for uh, different ministries who are out here trying to push the line and and do new things and sit in your presence, Lord. I thank you for honoring them publicly from the, the labor that they've sown secretly. I thank you for every person that's sown out of pocket, my brother Andrew Leon, who is a mighty kingdom shaker, mover and builder in the kingdom, who invests greatly in relationships. I ask that you would remember him today, Father God, and his family and the desires of his heart, the dreams of his heart. I ask that you would show him favor in the areas of which I'm thinking silently, Father God, for the sake of the public prayer. I ask that you would show him favor in those areas, Father God, that where he has been stewarding and building and planning, Father God, that you said that if he writes the plan and makes it simple, makes it plain and puts it in your hands, that you would bless it. So God, I know that he's done that and I ask that you bless it, Father God, and that you would open up those doors that no man can shut, Father God. I bless your holy name. Lord God, I receive every everything that you have for us, God. And if I can be a blessing, a sower in the kingdom, if I can use my gifts and talents to benefit any one of your children, Father God, which I'm reminded I got to fulfill my word on, on one thing, Lord, but I just, I take the time to lift you up, exalt you, and everybody that's on this live feed, whatever the good desires of their heart is, I come into agreement with it. I stand in agreement for families to restore, to heal, to, to, to actually heal in a way that actually brings reconciliation to come about in supernatural ways that the world scratches their head like only God could do this. Bless your holy name, God. I pray for... Uh, all the ministries, boss ministry out in Portland, pray for his family and his son and that the tragedies and misfortunes that have happened in the family would only lead to a stronger conviction of repentance and relationship and that it would be a real relationship. You may be invisible, Father God, you may be invisible but you're so available. And I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Help us to all be willing to wait on you, Lord. If we don't wait on you, Lord, you could just be in the other room grabbing what we need for the day, yet we have taken on our schedules and busyness and leave the conversation before we could be receivers of the blessing that you have for us. So please help us wait more on you, Lord. Please stir us, Lord. Give us more of you, Lord. More of you, less of us. For all the ministers that are rising up 
the devil has come against them very strongly, sown discord in the hearts of those that are babies in Christ, but are going out there, stepping out on faith and walking on troubled waters. I thank you, Father God, for bringing peace to those waters, bringing peace to those hearts and, and repentance. Help them realize that they're not alone. Their brokenness is just as broken as mine. I can think of so many, God, but right now I, I don't, I, I can't remember them, Father. Triple R, SMT, Speaks in Romaine, Giant Killer, different ministries. Hello, J Soldiers. If y'all if y'all know a ministry out here that well definitely all the churches too. The churches full gospel mission where I go. May God have his hand beautifully upon us. Amen. I sit here publicly in silence, Lord, waiting on you. What is it that you have for me today? What is it that you want me to do today? Hey, real talk, God says he loves you. God says he loves you, and the plan that he has for you is greater than anything that you could think, speak, fathom, or even imagine. He loves you. Hey, God bless you, Tyler. kind to one another, serve one another selflessly, knowing that the Father will take care of you. Serve each other genuinely, not with the heart expecting to receive. Serve each other genuinely. Love God, love his people.
Don't worry about the naysayers. God is an avenger. He is just and he will take care of your enemies. Pray for them. Pray that they be saved. Pray that they come to a true knowledge of God's son, Jesus Christ. Pray that they will have a blessed day, genuinely. Each of you have a work and calling from the Lord. Pick up the work that God has for you. Dallas, Spokane, Washington. For those of you that are just joining, I'm sitting here in silence, listening for the Lord and speaking what he's telling me to speak. Your families will be saved as you press into the Lord. Your family will have no choice but to see the radical transformation and godly anointing upon your life that they will hunger and thirst for the same thing. They won't be jealous or envious, but they will covet what you have. And by you genuinely seeking the Lord and living for him, it's what's gonna cause your family to be saved. So press in, press in, meaning read your word longer, pray stronger, bigger prayers that intimidate you. Step out on faith. God just reminded me of a uh, blank sheet of paper that uh, Caleb Altmeyer showed me and he said, faith is making a sheet of paper, taking one column and putting God on the top, taking the other column and putting you and all the things that are in your control about that one thing that you're seeking God about. Let's say it's a um, restoration or or reconciliation with another person then you will want to put forgiveness or turn their heart towards me and you put that in god's column and then on your column uh you you're commanded to pray for them and bless them so you would pray for them uh if you have the opportunity to be a blessing then you would bless them uh let's say you're trying to get a new job or a promotion, then on God's column, you will put um, a promotion, favor. Uh, you would put new opportunities. And then on your column, you would put right applications, uh, refine the resume, um, whatever steps, practical steps that you would have to take to get to your objective, you guys code labor. You'll have your list. God will have his list. God will finish his list before you finish yours. 
But as you're praying and listening and writing down those things and practically seeing them, taking steps towards them, then and only then is when you'll be doing your faith walk, as my brother Andrew says. It's a beautiful thing to see here with the Lord. I pray a special prayer and I ask you guys to pray with me for Kevin Santiago and the young disciples, Gina, Kevin, and their entire family who uh, were affected in New Orleans by the hurricane that came through. I pray that um, all their stuff was spared, that all their stuff was skipped over from the hurricane and that no thieves uh, came in and stole their stuff. I pray that they will be able to get directly back to work and that that they will be taken care of. They haven't been home in well over a week. And I pray that they would be blessed, um, that their stuff wouldn't be mildewy, that nothing would be damaged, that like Noah's Ark, it was just hidden away safely. Um, so they could get back to their normal life and they could be the blessing that they are to so many. God bless you guys. For those that are just tuning in, the major key is this. I had a situation at work where a guy came to the door and he wanted an emergency bed at a rehab but our de the, that department of the rehab was shut down for the night. And so I told him, call back in the morning. And there's, there's other details that I went over earlier, but you can just replay it later. So I talked to him. I was like, yo, how can I help you? And he was like, I re really need an emergency bed. I can't, I, I just need some. And I'm like, okay, I understand that, but that department's closed. Um, he looked like he was sweating profusely and he was just dehydrated and he asked for water. And he asked me for a bottle of water. So I went to my uh, vehicle, which wasn't far off, maybe like a minute and a half away. And I ran, went and got him a bottle of water, two Capri Suns and a Lunchable. And I went back uh, to give it to him. And he was already gone, like nowhere to be found. And God spoke to me in that very instant. This is what it's like with my children in prayer. They will not sit. They will not listen. They miss out because they leave the conversation early. They miss out because they exit the building too early. They ask me for all these things, whatever those things are, and it's in my power to give it to them. And I might step away to run to the other room and go grab it off the shelf. By the time I get back, my children already gone. So, nobody wanna sit, nobody wanna listen, nobody wanna wait. I'll wait on them, I'll put it back. And the next time we come, we asking for different things, but we don't sit and wait. So, they get set back on the shelf. God be glorified. God be glorified. To him be the glory. Speak to me, Lord. I'm listening. I'm a dirt suit, willing and available right now. Hallelujah, holy, holy, holy is your name.
if somebody's toes hurt right now, left toes. If there's somebody on here right now and their toes are hurting, God wants to heal you right now, right where you're at. Left toes, like the three toes on the left side, like if somebody's toes are in need of healing, God wants to heal you right now. Whether it's somebody on here right now or somebody that's going to be on here. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ, toes be healed according to the righteousness and perfection of Jesus Christ and his health. It says that Jesus took the stripes on his back so that you could be healed. It didn't say that you might be healed. It said that you are healed. So right now, every name above all names commands that those toes be healed right now. Jesus Christ is real. He's the name above all names. And every name underneath Jesus has to bow to Jesus. So toes bow now in Jesus' name because you are named and healed right now in Jesus' name. If you need direction in your steps, now is the time to ask God for the direction in Jesus' name. Spirit of Carpal Tunnel, the Lord rebukes you in Jesus' name. You have no place in the body of Christ, and we paralyze you and I command you to dry up and be sent to hell in Jesus' name. Free range of motion in Jesus' name. Move them toes. Whoever you are, move them toes, because they ain't going to be hurting no more in Jesus' name. Monty, God bless you. God bless you just sitting here listening for what the Lord is saying and I'm telling you what he's telling me. A fresh anointing over marriages is released right now. Somebody's gonna give me the praise report of how the presence of God affected their marriage right now. Message me. There's a there's a breakthrough in marriages right now. An anointing, a presence of God like never before. We release it to you in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. We appropriate the healing and righteousness and perfection of Jesus Christ in the throat of Michelle, that the swelling will be gone right now. Swelling, you're a name. Throat, you're a name. And you must bow and come into the 
perfection and righteousness of health of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bow right now in Jesus' name. Throat open up right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Yes, God wants to heal them toes in Jesus' name. Receive it. Receive it. Touch her toes, Philip, and proclaim the healing of Jesus Christ over her toes and then tell her to do something that she couldn't do before. Ah, it's so fire, Lord. God says he's available to work just like this for every viewer that's on here. Hallelujah. If we all sat and was doing the same thing right now, we'd be doing damage. Damage to the kingdom of Satan and growth and building and encouragement for the body of Christ. It's the gifts of the Lord that make room for you. Each one of you has a gift. Some of you prophesy, some of you heal, most of you heal. Some of y'all are hospitable. Some of y'all are encouragers. Some of y'all are teachers, apostles, prophets, evangelists. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you see the praise report right here. Hallelujah. Tell me my God ain't real. I'm going to tell you you fake. You lying. Look. Amen. Yes. Glory. You see the praise report that's the glory of the Lord right there. Toes are healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He wants to do infinitely more. somebody who's on here that's connected to somebody that's incarcerated and they've been on your heart reach out to them they need Jesus make them feel not forgot about whether you have to send money for their books if you have to write a letter letters are beautiful letters are 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 like a hug when you get a letter in prison, it's like a hug and the love is felt. Write a letter to him. Don't forget about him. Let him know that you, have, that you haven't forgot about him and Jesus Christ has not forgot about him. Release an anointing and creativity over everybody still on the live. I ask that y'all would join me in prayer, that you would sit and listen for the Lord. Speak what he's telling you. You're not confused about God's voice. You know God's voice.
Silence the devil in Jesus' name. Command him to be silent. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. I know y'all see that. I just responded to that comment of Phillips. Yes. Those fighting addiction don't make your higher power a rock, a doorknob, an idol. Jesus Christ has all the power and authority. Make him your higher power. Trust in him. When you're stressed out, when you're sick, withdrawing, sometimes you got to go through those withdrawals to remember just how bad you want this recovery and you can do it you got to get some new tools so don't be ashamed to reach out and get new tools for your mental toolbox you need new skills you do have issues but god is the solution jesus christ is the solution reach out so many counselors, uh, I know that he, he ain't gonna mind because he's a, he's a son of God, but Brother Andrew Leon is a certified counselor. Brother, or his wife, Brandy Leon, is a certified counselor in uh, drug dependency, substance uh, dependency. And I know that there are others that are certified counselors that are in this Christian walk that will give you the tools that you need, point you in the right direction. Remember, when you are weak, he is strong. There's somebody that's believing for thousands of dollars that feels like their prayer hasn't been heard. God has heard that prayer and is waiting on you to wait on him. To truly wait on him. I go to full gospel mission here in Spokane. Pastor Steve Cannon, Apostle, Apostle Steve Cannon. I call him Steve, but his name's Stephen. That event that you're trying to make happen, God hears those prayers. He sees your fasting. He's waiting on you.
and it's already done. There's givers in the kingdom that, my goodness, have way more than they need and are looking for a place to give in the right space. The right people doing the right thing. So, trust in the Lord, whoever that is. And it's not Philip. somebody's ankle in Jesus mighty name be healed ankle come into right alignment with the health of Jesus Christ you are a name and you must bow to Jesus right now be healed Psalms 91, Psalm 72. Give the king your judgments, O God. It's Psalm 72. Glory and universality, universality of the Messiah's reign. Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. He will judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. The mountains will bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. He will bring justice to the poor of the people. He will save the children of the needy and he will break in pieces the oppressor. They shall fear you as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. He shall come down like rain upon the grass before mowing like showers that water the earth. In his days, the righteous shall flourish and abundance of peace until the moon is no more. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Those who dwell in the wilderness will bow before him and his enemies will lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles Islies will be will bring presents. The king of the kings of Sheba and Seba 
will offer gifts. Yes, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. For he will deliver the needy when he cries, the poor also, and him who has no helper. He will spare the poor and needy and will save the souls of the needy. He will redeem their life from oppression and violence and precious and precious shall be their blood in his sight. Listen to that. He will redeem their life from oppression and violence and precious shall be their blood in his sight. And he shall live and the gold of Sheba will be given to him. Prayer also will be made for him continually and daily he shall be praised. There will be an abundance of grain in the earth. On the top of the mountains, its fruit shall wave like Lebanon and those of the city shall flourish like grass of the earth. His name shall endure forever. His name shall continue as long as the sun and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord God the Lord God of Israel, who only does wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. The prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. Hallelujah. And then he says, Psalm 91. I love Psalm 91. Safety of abiding in the presence of God. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the Father and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near to you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, no, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You know, internal grind ministries, God just placed you on my heart. And this is for you. God is with you. He is for you. Rest in his presence. There's safety and abiding in his presence. Internal grind ministries. You're laid on my heart. Uh, grounded for life. Help fest as well. God hears you. Keep pressing in. Hallelujah. I believe I've given you what God's given me. May you guys be encouraged and blessed. May the anointing of the Lord be with you. May the healing of the Lord be with you. May you be protected from COVID and any variants, viruses or sickness in Jesus name. May you be filled with confidence in Jesus name.
wow, look at, look at God. Look at God, hallelujah, look at that. Tiffany Brown from Help Fest, didn't even know you was on here. Real talk, hallelujah. I know, I know God is speaking directly to Help Fest as well. Um, back, you are a name. Tiffany Brown, God wants to heal your back. In Jesus' mighty name, is it your lower back? May the healing of the Lord be upon the back of Tiffany Brown in Jesus' name. Back, you have a name. Spine, you have a name. And you must bow at the name of Jesus Christ. We command you to bow through the power and authority of Jesus Christ. Back, be healed now in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. We receive the healing right now in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for Nicanor right now. Sickness, spirit of infirmity, the Lord rebukes you in Nicanor's life. In Jesus' name, according to Zechariah 3, 2, we speak life and life more abundantly over you, Nicanor. Rise up. <sighs> Breathe in Jesus' name. Breathe in Jesus' name. Every ailment in the lungs or any attack, any ailment in the body of Nicanor right now in Jesus' name must go. We pour the blood of Jesus over your entire body from the inside to the outside. In the spirit realm, we seal you in the blood of Jesus right now. And every demon that torments, bound right now, tied up and cast to the pit of hell in Jesus' name. Yes, yes. May the healing of the Lord be with you. Yes. May the healing of the Lord be with you. Receive it. Jesus Christ took the stripes so that you would be healed. We're going to go to it. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Isaiah 53, 5. Brooke, the Lord is with you. Jesus Christ loves you. 
The best inspiration that you can receive is the Holy Spirit's teaching and instruction for your life. Your identity is not in addiction. The mistakes that you have made do not make you. Your identity is found in Christ. And this is the truth. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he openly, or yet he opened not his mouth. And throughout all these trials, he didn't say nothing. This applies to you, Brooke. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who would declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul unto death and he was num numbered with the transgressors and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. That's all you in Jesus name. We got mail. That's all you in Jesus name. If you need faith, it says faith the size of a mustard seed will get you everything that you need. It will be enough for you to say to this mountain, be lifted up and cast into the sea. Believe that it's been done because it's already done. The power and authority and dominion is in you. God is using you, you that's watching right now. I know you, I know you feel the Holy Ghost over that. You have the power. God is choosing you to get his will done in the earth. But he needs your faith to be there. And you're not going to have the faith watching Netflix. I'm sorry. You might get a dose out of pure flicks. Ain't coming from Netflix. Ain't coming from Amazon Prime. God will use a song to encourage you to get you to the word of God. But he's trying to get you to the word of God. He's trying to get you in the kingdom. You are a representer of Jesus Christ in the earth. You have a job to do. You have a work to do. And you have to represent Jesus to everybody that you see. Your number one mission is to make disciples of all nations and go baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You have got to get the work done that the Lord has put in front of you. And until you pick it up, you're not going to find the fulfillment that you're looking for. There is a God on all of our hearts. There is a throne on all of our hearts. Who's sitting on that throne? Jesus Christ is on mine. And where you spend your dollars and your time will show you who and what you serve. That's how you're going to know which God is on your heart. God openly said, serve each other genuinely, selflessly, knowing that I will take care of you, expecting nothing in return. 
Jesus loves each and every one of you. I got a work to do. I have a music video promo flyer to create. I have got to go do that. That's the work that is in front of me today. And I also have to get ready for work. May God be with you. May he bless you. May you be encouraged. And may you pick up the work that God has for you. And may the God, the creator of the universe, be the throne on your heart. In Jesus' name, what is your heart? That is everything about you. Your passions, your desires, your emotions, your memory, your reflection, your will, your mind. It's everything that makes you you. Your passions, your desires. Whatever it is that you're desiring, go after God and all of that. Whatever it is that you're emotionally thinking about, go after God and all of that. Whatever it is that you're trying to remember, recall God and all of that. And he will show up. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously and everything else will be added to you. You have a prayer request. God has a will that he wants done. And we pray for every lost soul that sees this right now. And all those on this live feed and those that are watching later will call into heaven all souls that are watching right now. If they speak against you in Jesus' name, that is earthly license for them to be snatched out of the kingdom of hell and put into the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Go ahead and say something about me. Go ahead and speak evil on me. I pray that God and peace of Christ will be with you and that the repentance of the Lord will come upon you so powerfully and that he would be so good to you that you would have no choice but to realize that there's a real God in heaven who loves and cares about me and that you would return to him and all his fullness and glory will be revealed in your life. Hallelujah. May the Lord be with you. I gots to go in Jesus' name.